Today on Hacktip, we're formatting lines of text with the number lines, fold, and formatter commands. Welcome to Hacktip, the show where we break down concepts, tools, and techniques for hackers, gurus, and IT ninjas. I'm your host, Shannon Morris, and today we are formatting lines of text with the number lines, fold, and formatter commands. We have learned a lot about text processing so far on Hacktips, and there is still plenty to learn before we can actually get into scripting projects. So today we'll learn about the NL command, which is used to number lines, the fold command, which is used for wrapping text, and the format command. So first up is the NL command. So if I do an example on my computer over here, I'm gonna go ahead and type in NL birthdays. And that's it. Cool, so you can tell here that it numbered it if I compare it to the original form of text in that birthdays.txt, you'll notice that there were no numbers before the names of these Sailor Moon characters. And in the case of using NL, which is the number line command, you have one through number nine. Cool, so it works. So NL simply adds numbers and spaces to the beginning of each of these lines of text. It's obviously pretty simple on the surface, but NL also lets you add in specific values for the lines because it uses something called logical pages, which can allow it to reset the sequence of lines whenever you are numbering them. So for example, I don't have to start with the number one every time. I could add in a new command to output uh, the text of documents to standard input. You can also use NL with multiple documents like this example. So I can simply type in NL birthdays and then I'm going to use a second one called birthdays sorted where I sorted them differently. And in this case, it's going to list out each of those numbers for each of those lines as if it's a reoccurring document. It's not two separate ones. It's going to treat both of those documents as a continuation of that numbered sequence. So it's not gonna start over at one in the middle somewhere. I can also add different values to options as well. For example, I can use the tech I option in this case. And if I type that in an L tech I, I'll use three and I'll show you what this does when you click enter. Okay, so you'll notice that the numbers in this case start at one and then they go to four, seven, 10, and so on and so forth. So this is going to sort birthdays.txt, that document, in increments of three. While well, obviously, if you use NL, it's going to default to one. You can also use tack N to change the formatting from left or right justified. Now, normally it is always going to be simply right justified, but in this case, I can go ahead and change it. So I'll do on my computer, I'm gonna type in NL and I'll use tack N to tell them which justification I want to use. And then the option is going to be RZ. Oops, I actually need to include the text file that I want to change. Birthdays, there we go. And you'll notice that it goes ahead and right justifies, but it also has a bunch of zeros at the beginning to take up those spaces. So in this case, I could also use tack W to change the width of the line number field, while the default is usually set to six. So if you look back at my computer here and we take a look at those zeros at the beginning of the last option and that last command, you'll notice that it has one, two, three, four, five zeros and then the numbers. So that means that it is a width of six for that first column. Now if I type in this new command, it's NL tack W, I'm gonna change it to 20 and then use my text document. That adds in 20 characters, so including the one, so that would be, if I had zeros, it would be 19 zeros and then the one, as opposed to just the six. This could be very, very useful if you're doing some kind of coding and you want to format your text in a certain way. Now the next command that I wanted to talk about is called fold, which will wrap your lines of text to a specified format. So an example for this one is I'm going to change the birthdays and birthday sorted ones again. So I'll use the command fold, and then I'll type in tech W 15 birthdays, and I'll just use birthdays, I'm not gonna use two of them. Okay, so it looks janky, obviously, <laughs> but that's because it's changing the width from the default to 15, and I believe the default is 
80. I'll have to check on that for y'all. But it's going to change it so that each line of text is going to be 15 characters wide. If I can highlight it, there we go. 15 characters wide before it starts on the next line. So it's not gonna have that nice formatting that we already had in that birthdays.txt. It looks janky. That's because it's changing those characters. The default is actually 80 characters and you can increase that or decrease it depending on your needs. Now I can also pipe input into it like this. I can use echo. So I'm gonna use echo and type in fighting evil by moonlight because I'm all about the Sailor Moon right now. Winning love by daylight. And I'll pipe that over to the fold command, and I'm gonna use the same thing, tack W, 15, and then I just hit enter. Okay, so in this case, it shows 15 characters on each line before hitting enter, and it even will do so in the middle of a word, and it does that on each of these. So winning is <laughs> entered right in the middle of WI and then the rest of the word. Same thing with daylight at the bottom. So doesn't look that great, but there is a way that I can fix this. I can add a tax S to the very end of that command to make the fold break the line at the last space before the width hits 15, and that will keep your full word instead of breaking them up. So if I do that on that example, I'll just add the tack S at the end, hit enter, and then we have the full word on each of those lines. That looks a lot better. Might be very useful for poems and songs and things. So that is about it for those first two commands. So after the break, we are going to talk about a really easy to use text formatter, but first it is time for a word from our sponsor. IT people know how it is when all of those alerts and tickets light up your monitor like a Christmas tree. You're not being productive, you're just stressed out. No mere mortal can analyze all of those alerts and respond to all of those tickets. But luckily, I got good news. You can immediately reduce that noise with Moogsoft AI Ops. Moogsoft AI Ops is an algorithmic IT ops platform that reduces your IT alerts and tickets by up to 99%, and that is guaranteed. Moogsoft AI ops platform integrates with all of your existing IT tools and Moogsoft's patented technology correlates events into actionable work items. They're called situations so that you can focus on tackling the stuff that actually matters to your job. Now in one case study, a company was experiencing tons of alert fatigue, lack of contacts, thousands of tickets. Moogsoft helped with that reactive approach to incident response tickets by enabling time to value, easing the integration of ITSM tools and existing monitoring, and increasing the quality of event correlation across multiple tools. They ended up seeing a 33% reduction in mean time to restore in the business. With Moogsoft AI Ops, you can reduce your IT tickets and alerts by up to 99% right now. So visit Moogsoft.com to get a demo. That's M-O-O-G-S-O-F-T dot com. Moogsoft.com. We are now back and it's time to talk about FMT. That's the format command. So format can fold text, but it can also format whole paragraphs of text however you need. So I'm gonna go ahead and get right into an example with this one. Again, I did say FMT, that is how you spell it. It's FMT for format, tack W and 50. So this is width 50. And I'm gonna use a different text document this time. It's moon.txt. Okay, so there is a whole wall of text there. I get an output with a bunch of text. It's a big boxy wall of text that ends at 50 characters per line. It's cool, but it's really busy. If you look at it, nobody wants to read it. This is where options come into play. So I'm gonna add a tack S to that same one for split only mode. So I'll put that right here and hit enter. Okay, that looks a lot prettier. So this is going to split lines only to the column width, but it won't include shorter lines. And since most of these lines are shorter because this is a song that I decided to put in a text doc, it's going to keep each of those different lines on a different line. It's not going to combine them into that huge body of text that we saw previously. So I kind of like it better whenever I use tack S. But what if you have code that has commenting all over the place? If you specify the comments on each line of code, like a lot of people do, they just use the hashtag, which also is known as the pound sign at the beginning. And you can tell format to change only selected portions of the document and not format the whole thing if it's looking for a specific character. So in this case, if I'm using the hashtag or the pound sign, I can do an example like this. I'll type in FMT again for format, tack W50. So we'll, we'll go ahead and do 50 again. 
And I'm gonna use tack P, and this is the special one that we're showing right now and use the hashtag space. So this tag P and then the hashtag space, which is in, included in between those uh, single quotes, that's going to tell format to only format the lines that have that hashtag space at the beginning of the line and just ignore everything else. So I'm gonna end it with the text document and hit enter. Now it looks the same so far, but if I scroll up to the previous example, this was one of the lines of text in there. This is the second verse. So that was my comment for if this was code, it would be code. <laughs> and then in this case, it combines both of those onto the same line because it's only formatting that one line since it begins with that hashtag and that space. That's pretty cool. And that could be extremely useful if you have lots and lots of lines of commenting that you have to kind of combine into one. Everything else is left unchanged. That's so cool, I love this. And I'm gonna go ahead and end this episode here, but before I leave, you are probably starting to see how all of these different commands and options start being incredibly useful for programming your own scripts right in the terminal. And guess what? That is exactly what we are working towards. So I wanna hear your feedback, what program or command is giving you those warm fuzzies. Hit the comments below or hit me up tips at hack5.org and be sure to check out our sister show, Hack5, for more great stuff just like this. I'll be there reminding you to trust your technolust.